Hi, I'm Phil Graves with Dow Tiles Exteriors Program for Outdoor Living Products, and today we're going to demonstrate how to install our two centimeter thick porcelain pavers in a bonded application. And to help us out today, we've got Gerald Sloan, technical expert from our vendor partner, Mape. Gerald, great to have you here. Nice to be with you, Phil. That's awesome. And Gerald's a great resource for us and a great partner for us, so uh, we're lucky to have Gerald with us today. Now, when we talk about two centimeter thick porcelain pavers, this is an outdoor decorative paving material that's still relatively new to the U.S. market, about eight years in the U.S. now. Um, but what's really, really neat about these pavers is that their aesthetic is just incredibly enduring. It will not scratch, it's not going to stain, and it's not going to fade in the sun with time either. So essentially, these things are going to look brand new uh, for decades to come. Uh, what else is great about this product is uh, it's very versatile in installation. So we can put it in a raised floor application on pedestals. Uh, we can use it as deck boards uh, with a special underlayment for overhead decking. Um, it can be installed in a typical or traditional hardscape method where you're on compacted aggregate, or it can be bonded to a concrete slab or set in a thick mortar bed. And today we're going to be talking about bonding it to a concrete slab and two things that that delivers you is a more permanent installation and the ability to accommodate vehicular traffic. So who wouldn't want a beautiful wood look porcelain driveway to up that reset or up the uh, curb value or curb appeal of the home. Now when we go outside the building things change a little bit. Uh, Gerald can you walk us through what's different about an exterior environment for a bonded application versus interior? Sure, Phil. The uh, things do change when you go outside the door. Uh, flat surfaces are not usually level and should not be, and temperatures do fluctuate a lot. We have extreme temperatures, and Phil, it rains outdoors. That's right. So, so what, you're, what you're telling me, Gerald, is when you're inside the building, the floor is flat, the temperature is constant, and it never rains, and when you go outside the building, all of that changes. That's correct. All right, so Gerald, I understand that you've got some specialty products for this type of application, but why wouldn't I just go down to the box store and grab a few bags of Type S and go to town? Phil, Type S is designed specifically for stacking purposes for brick and block. So you have a stacking pressures that's involved with uh, Type S. What we're dealing with on an exterior application for these tiles is a shearing action. Uh, type S does not work well for shear. It works well for stacking. The products we're going to be using today work extremely well for staying bonded during a shearing force. All right, so Gerald, what I'm hearing you tell me is that the Type S has good compressive strength because it has to stack and hold weight, yes. but that it doesn't have good shear strength. That's correct. So how much stronger are your products for this application in terms of shear strength than a Type S, for instance. The products we'll be showing today will exceed 10 times the shear strength of Type S. 10 times as strong? Yes. Well, that sounds pretty impressive. All right, Gerald. So let's put it into a practical application. I've got a concrete patio in my backyard and I would like to overlay it with these porcelain pavers. If I go out there to evaluate that slab to see if it's suitable for overlay, what kind of things am I looking for? There's three main things you're looking for to prepare, and that is slope, angle of the slab, to manage water. The next thing is, is onulations in that slab. How many highs and lows? Because we need a flat surface. So how do, we, how do we true that up if there are some undulations or low spots? Well, one of the misconceptions is using thin set, the bonding properties for the tile. That thin set is not designed to true up that substrate. We do have products for truing up. Okay, so there are other products that you can use prior to doing the thin set. Correct. Okay, and what's the third thing? My concrete has some cracks in it. Crack isolation products. There's okay. Basically, there's two types of concrete. You got cracked and concrete that's going to crack. That's right. So we highly recommend that you use a crack isolation product under your tile installation. And that's just to make sure that any cracking in my slab doesn't transfer up through the tile and crack the surface. That's correct, Phil. However, for the most part, if my concrete slab is structurally sound, it's not heaving, there's not a section that's lower, and it doesn't have excessive concrete where it's obviously broken apart, probably a good candidate for overlay. Correct, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, sir. 
All right, Charles, so for the purposes of this demonstration, we opted for the top of the line crack isolation membrane, correct? That's correct. Tell us about what it is, please. This is Mop Elastic Turbo. The, this is a two component cement based crack isolation product that uh, goes on easily with a roller and or a brush and it can be tiled within 90 minutes after installation. Fantastic. So at this point, our slab is prepped. Correct. And now we can start talking about mortar and tile. Let's talk about mortar. All right, let's do it. That's great. All right, Gerald, let's talk about uh, the mortar. Now this, tell me, this is a cement based product, correct? It is. Okay, now with my background, I hear cement and I think efflorescence. For instance, concrete paver has Portland cement in it. Uh, as it cures, it can tend to efflorescence and it doesn't look so good on top of colored concrete. A porcelain paver, on the other hand, has no Portland cement in it, so it cannot efflorescence. But now we're introducing a cement based product to the system and I hear efflorescence. Okay, we're working with Granny Rapid. Granny Rapid does not contain Portland cement. It contains a, a, a calcium aluminum cement, which does not contribute to efflorescence. Okay, and then since it's a different type of cement, does it have any other performance attributes over, say, like a Type S? It does. It is very strong bond, and it also has a, a rapid setting, meaning that I can walk on this in three to four hours and I can turn it over to full traffic, heavy traffic, in 24 hours. So when I overlay my driveway, I have to wait a day, but then I can start driving. That's correct. Beautiful, I love it. Gerald, it's time to talk about tools, right? From yes, a contractor sir. perspective, this is the favorite part, mm -hmm. and having the right or the wrong tool on the job site can kind of make or break a job, is that right? That's correct. Okay, so we're talking about mortar, mm -hmm. so that means we're gonna have to talk about mixing, correct? That's it. Yes, sir. All right, tell me about what we're mixing with. Okay, we're gonna mix with a slow speed drill, and we're gonna mix with a specific type of mixing paddle that promotes uh, mixing without entrapping air. We don't want to have air in. So one of the benefits of using a spiral design mixing paddle is it pulls from the bottom of the bucket not to pull from the top down to entrap So that air. keeps the air from getting in from the top down action. Right. Okay. And the slow speed, I'm talking 300 right. RPM. 300 RPM. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, are those easy to find, easy to come by? There's several available, uh, but be sure to check to make sure because many drills out there now is 450 and up. Uh, and what check. happens if you have too much speed? You can entrap the air and, so and create So still problems. air entrapment is the Correct. big problem. Yeah, that's okay. the problem. Okay, and then after we've got it all mixed and we haven't entrapped any air yeah. in the mix, right? Yeah. Now it's time to trowel it out. So I go to the masonry supply store, not having a big tile background, I see way too many different types of trowels. So help me out with that. What trowel are we gonna use for this larger format tile? This large format tile, there's two acceptable trials. One is the conventional half inch by half inch notch trial. Uh, another one is the what's called the Euro notch. I prefer the Euro notch. Either one's acceptable, but I'll tell you why I prefer the Euro notch in comparison to the conventional half by half notch. The half by half requires that once you've trialed out your thin set, to do the installation is to push down, push forward, pull back, to collapse the meter notches. Okay. The Euro notch, however, because of the way it's designed, it just requires press down. So I've eliminated those two steps by just pressing down. And the reason why this is important is because we need a minimum of 95% coverage of thin set underneath this tile once it's installed. And uh, Euro notch seems to promote that with, le with two less steps. I got you. So when you have a larger, thicker, heavier tile, yeah. reducing that step, because this is, the tile is heavy, the mortar is sticky, it's maybe not so easy to work around and That's you risk not getting 95% coverage. That's correct. Makes perfect sense, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're, we've talked about the, the materials we're gonna use and the tools we're gonna use. So we've got a good part of a plan going already. Now what about, these are pretty big size tiles. Yes. So what about layout, is that important? It is very important to minimize waste and to make it pleasing to the eye. So the aesthetics of it, the layout is very important. Well, what we're looking for is centered and balanced. And uh, we wanna try to make sure that it's, uh, that it's uh, well planned for before we actually start cutting and installing. 
Now, when we do get our layout, we understand where the cuts are gonna be. Mm -hmm. Then we begin to uh, establish marks or lines. We'll use a chalk line to snap in, in order for us to know where to trial or our trialing points are. All right, so when you're starting to trial the mortar for your mm -hmm. first few tiles or the first section that you're gonna tile, uh -huh. Uh, you snap a chalk line so you know to not go too far with Correct, that yes. mortar. And why, why is that? Why is that? A, well, what we want to have is we want to have full coverage underneath the tile with our trialing practices and then also to keep our work area neat and clean so we don't over trial or under trial. We, we know where to stop. Okay, great. And then once you get going, uh, you, you got to put spacers in there, right? Like any indoor tile? Yes, they, this okay. is very important because these tiles are heavy, they're big, and most often you'll have a helper to work to install that. You need to be careful to make sure these two tiles do not bump together during the installation. Mm -hmm. So a spacer in between as you do your installation uh, is very important. So you have something there. And also that minimum grout joint width. Right. Because these tiles are so thick, they require a, a, a minimum of a 3 16 grout joint width. Mm -hmm. Uh, not less than that, in order to have sufficient room to get enough grout in there to Understood. make that function appropriately. Yeah, okay. In the process of the spacers, there's also something referred to as levelers. Levelers, uh, we may not necessarily be leveling the tile, but we do want to have the tile Because we're flat. outside, we're outside, we're sloped. Yeah, we're, we're just flat, sloped. but we're not level. Right, right. Okay. we're not level, we are going to be, need to be flat in order for these tiles not to have one module of tile higher than the other. So we're tuning the tiles to be smooth and not having lippage related issues. Lippage, right. That's, right. That's where a lip of the tile sticks up over the one next to it. Correct. These tuners are very important to minimize or eliminate that lippage. Okay. Okay, now that we're into the actual installation phase of the project, mm -hmm. before we stick the first tile down to the mortar, you gotta clean these things, right? Yes, sir. Uh, typically, there's uh, excess kiln release on the back of the tile. That needs to be sponged off. So I would clean them prior to the installation to ensure that I have no bond breaker or potential for a bond breaker on the back of the tile. Okay, and then once we start laying the tile, what if I get a little bit of uh, the mortar mix on top of the tile? I would clean as I go. It's much easier to remove any excess mortar as you go than to wait to the next day. Well, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that reminds me, you told me earlier that we needed to have 95% coverage on the back of the tile. The tile's on the ground. How am I supposed to be able to tell? Okay, you're right. Minimum of 95% coverage with all edges and all corners supported. So how we tell that, we should periodically pick up a tile. So we just lift the tile. Check and look it out. and see, okay. and, and if you see all your edges and all your corners are covered and then you have a basically complete coverage, then you're good to go. Okay, and then as I'm working with the product, you know, I've got uh, various pails, I've got tools, everything's getting a little bit dirty. How do I keep that uh, from mucking up the solution? Yes, so we want you to clean as you go and also clean your mixing pail as you go. If you have residue leftover product in your mixing pail and you need add and mix new product on top of that, you can compromise the setting times. You can actually accelerate the setting times by adding old and new together. So we want you to clean that pail out in order okay. for your product to perform properly. Okay, I understand that. Now, what if I've got quite a bit left mm -hmm. in the pail and I notice that it seems like it's starting to skin over or start to set up a little bit. Can I hit it again with a mixer? Can I add some water to the mix? We do not recommend that you add anything to that mix. It's specific to a liquid that it comes with and the powder. Do not retemper. So if you add anything to that, you're gonna reduce the performance of that product. So if it begins to go off or you begin to lose it, then just get a new mix, remix, or, to, or to mix a new pail. So very important to follow the installation instructions so it's not compromise, compromise the integrity of the install. That's correct. So on a typical job, Gerald, how many people are going to be in the crew? Uh, it's commonplace to see a two-person crew minimum. Uh, on larger areas, more personnel can be utilized. Gerald, for this particular application, what grout material are we going to use from MAPE and why that particular one? Phil, we're going to use Ultra Color Plus FA. It's uh, color consistent, rapid setting, and efflorescence free. I like that. And it has drop effect. Never heard of drop effect. What's drop effect? Drop effect just simply means it's reduced water absorption and it helps prevent many of the stains that's common. 
Okay, so are you telling me that I can get away potentially without sealing my grout in an outdoor application? You can seal it if you want to, but it is not required. That is fantastic. Okay, let's talk about the actual process then, from mixing the grout to installing it into the joints. Okay, the mixing process is very simple. On the other hand, we've got to be very careful because one component that goes in is water to a powder and then mixing. There is ratios given for how much water for how much powder to mix properly. Now, once it's been mixed correctly, when we get ready to do the installation, there's a step that needs to be addressed, and that is always dampen the tile first. Uh, dry tile will absorb some, a tiny amount, but some, and we want to dampen that so it gives us a cushion so our grout will go in smooth. Okay. Uh, once we've actually began to do the installation, we need to focus on our grout flow held at a 12 to 15 degree angle and pushing the grout into the joint to pack the joint full. Uh -huh. uh, once we've accomplished packing the joints, then we come back with a grout float and we stand it up on a 90 degree angle and we use it to cut off the excess grout. Now once we've done that, the grout needs to sit for a short moment to firm up. And then we'll come back with a sponge and begin to dress the joints. We'll use that sponge in a circular fashion to dress those joints, to make them pretty. And then we'll come back with the same sponge, of course clean, and now we're going to actually uh, remove the excess grout film from the top of the tile. There is one last part of that that we will use clean water to do a final rinse to remove any haze that may have uh, accumulated on top of the tile. And then we're done. We're done. All right, Gerald, as we discussed earlier, this is a rigid pavement. Right? It's a bonded application, not a flexible base. It's not installed over compacted aggregate. It's bonded, it's porcelain bonded to a concrete slab. So two dissimilar materials. Mm -hmm. We're in an outdoor environment. We're going to have temperature swings. In yeah. some markets more than others, of mm -hmm. course. However, there's still going to be some expansion and contraction of these dissimilar materials That's that are bonded right. together. So that tells me we're going to have to accommodate for some level of movement. That's right. And we're going to do that by installing movement joints, correct? That's correct. Okay, let's go step by step. Mm -hmm. you know, why movement joints mm -hmm. and then how movement joints? Okay, let's start out with why. And it's just because of exactly what you said. Uh, everything moves mm -hmm. and we have to allow it somewhere to move to. Uh, if we do not and we install a tile hard against restraining surfaces in all directions, the tile's still going to move, it's just going to expand and it will tent, so it'll lift. You'll see this lifting action. No, we don't want that. No, we don't want That's that. That's right. So we have to allow it somewhere to expand too. So every 12 feet, or not to exceed 12 feet, in each direction, we need a soft joint. So a you're going to have a, a grid set on 12 feet in two directions right. with movement joints every 12 feet. Right. Okay. And then also at changes in plane, so re restraining surfaces such as walls. We need a movement joint or a soft joint. Like where my driveway meets my garage. Correct. Now we are using Mopasil T Plus. Uh, there's some specifics about the installation on this that we need to pay close attention well, to. Well first what is that? What's the material? Okay this is 100% silicone. Okay. And, it, and the installation procedure on it can be very simple. First of all it, we always have to make sure that the joint is clean. Right and we're outside so leaves, pine needles, all kinds of things are going to blow in there. Right, that needs to go. Okay. Any grout, any thin set, any construction debris of Stuff source, that'll get in the way. That needs to be cleaned out. All right. Now once I've cleaned that joint, now I am applying a painter's tape on top of the tile because I want to protect the top of the tile. The next part is we want to protect the bottom of that joint. Uh, so we want a two-sided bond. We want to bond to the sides of the tile, but not to the bottom of the joint. Our sealant is going to have a bond breaker tape or a backer rod installed in the bottom of the joint. Mm -hmm. After we've installed the backer rod, yep. now I'm installing the sealant. Now notice as I install the sealant, I'm using a little excessive amount of sealant. I want it to build up slightly on top of the backer rod. Mm -hmm. uh, now before I actually finish the top of the sealant, I am using just soap and water. Okay. 
All right, I'm applying the soap and water on top of the sealant. The next step is very important, and that is something as simple as a plastic spoon will give me a tool to actually tool the sealant. So I use the bottom of the spoon mm -hmm. to actually tool that and notice how as I tool across the top of the sealant after I have my soapy water applied, then the sealant does not bond to anything other than laying over onto the tape. Okay. Now once I've actually tooled the top of the joint, my next step is removing the tape. To remove the tape, I actually began to pull the tape across, as I remove it, across the finished joint slowly. So any of these strings that may be from the finishing process will fall on top of the silicone sealant. Now I'll use the other side as well. I'll pick this one up and then pull it across the joint as well. And now if there are, and they usually will be, any um, tooling or refinishing, retouching up because of that stringy action mm -hmm. of removing that tape. Now I'll reapply the soapy water. Just soapy water. Just soapy water. Great. And you can dress any rough areas with your finger. Okay. And you have a finished joint. A long Fantastic. Lasting, long lasting. Looking great, lasting a long time. That's correct. Wonderful. So there you have it. A stunningly beautiful, incredibly durable and exceedingly low maintenance wood look porcelain overlay on a concrete slab bonded application which means it's good for light vehicular traffic residential driveways parkways and plazas and we're so confident that this is going to be a long lasting installation that we're offering 15 and 25 year full system warranties any climate across north america and for more information on that warranty, you can go to www.daltile.com slash exteriors. Find the button on the front page that says industry leading warranty. Click there and read all about it. For Daltile's exteriors program, I'm Phil Graves. We've got Gerald Sloan with MaPay. Thank you so much, Thank Gerald, you, for your time and expertise today. That was absolutely outstanding. Mm -hmm. Hope to have you back. Um, speaking of having people back, we uh, are going to have additional content for educational purposes coming out so that you as an installer can arm yourself with the knowledge that you need to leave behind the best possible projects while eliminating callbacks. Can't wait to do some business together and we'll see you later.